Georgia Virtue presents the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. This is episode 229. This week, we have an update on the smacked fanny, Daniel's defense, policing for profit, and not so safe deposit boxes. I'm Dave Roberts. With me is my partner in crime, writer, journalist, dog mom, and owner of the GeorgiaVirtue.com, Jessica Salaji. Hello, Dave. How was your week? My week was good. Um, I once again was reminded that my dogs are far more famous than I'll ever be, which is okay, but I mean, they just exist and they're way more famous. And so the rest of us yeah. are out here trying to do work, trying to make money and get attention to like pay attention to content and everything. And you put a dog out there and they're like, Viral. Look, the, the picture with you and Stanley was fantastic. He has he has the the greatest smile in, in the world. He just he's just a happy boy. Yes, you just smile back, even though it's just a picture, because you're like, look at him. Yeah, he, I I can't believe somebody let him go. Just just let him roam, because he's he's such a good baby. I mean, he's he's you know uh, obviously a, a part of your life, but he has adapted totally to, to going and doing public appearances and yeah. <laughs> book signings and showing up at radio stations. And right. he just, he just, it is not anything that you trained. He's just, that's just his nature. I, I, I can't believe that anybody would let something, someone so sweet, just wander the streets. I know. I think, didn't they say that about you before Connie found you? Uh, no one has ever uh, <laughs> referred to me as cute or sweet. <laughs> but you have wandered the streets. I have wandered the streets. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did try my hand at stand-up on Friday night. How'd that go? Oh, I murdered the room. Yeah? Thunderous applause? Yes, but it was, it was a pretty... It was a low bar, because I don't tell jokes. Uh, I'll tell stories. And that what some of these people were doing was going up and looking at, at looking at their phone and pulling up jokes and li- like little dirty Johnny j- uh, jokes. And uh, anybody who's who uh, who's heard little d- uh, dirty Johnny, like if we were telling this jo- these jokes 25 years ago when when I was in the army. It, it just I knew you, you knew every punchline. And all that stuff, but that's not that's not what I consider comedy. So I, you know, I went up and just told stories. And trust me, Matt Lowe was a punchline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was there. And him and his seven kids, and well, his kids weren't there because it was. Uh, I do work blue. I was gonna say you took your baby to a bar. That's from a movie, but <sighs> Sweet Home Alabama. Yes. Oh, I'm good. You brought a baby to a bar. <laughs> no, but but it was he. It was it, it, announcement was made like get all your if if you're under eighteen you need to leave mm-hmm. and get out get out of the building because you know we're gonna work blue. But yeah, it, it was it it was a good time. Uh, I, I may do it again. I don't know, but because uh, you only have so many stories, it's not like I'm gonna have original content because nothing interesting happens to me anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm telling stuff fault. that it's, it's it's called being an adult. So you know, all my good stories happened 20 years ago when I was not an adult. Right now, you're all responsible and stuff. I know, a business owner, and I have to. I have. Uh, uh, the bad thing is, is like some of the people that came up to me were people that I knew that I know from being in business. Like, I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you weren't saying anything that was like that you wouldn't say on a Facebook Live. I mean, uh, I mean, are you going to be one of those ones that where you like see the viral video at some point and we're like, like, are you going to get Jason Spencered? No, I don't think so. I mean, look, it, it's 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 probably unbecoming if I were to to run for like you know U.S. Senate. But it's not unbecoming power to run for state house, <laughs> you, you know. Okay. <laughs> so we have to uh, remind y'all that we were correct about Fulton DA Fanny Willis needing to be disqualified from the Burt Jones component of the election probe. Yeah, obviously. I mean, 
I don't think anyone's well, well, surprised that we were right. Oh, but the fact that we were right and the judge agrees with us. Yes. Well. He obviously listens. He, <laughs> correct. So it was Judge McBurney in Fulton County Superior Court, I believe. Um, and obviously, this is a, if you didn't if you missed last week's show, but this was about Burt Jones and his now Democratic general election opponent, um, the DA in Fulton County. She hosted a fundraiser for his opponent during the primary, the Democratic primary. She argued, well, it was just a primary. We didn't know who was going to make it. Everyone else was like, well, you could have known you would have known that he might make it and that he might face Burt Jones. And um, the judge agreed and said. And he ordered the um, AG's office to select a state prosecutor to question and probe Burt Jones only. Um, the All the others remain intact. But, you know, I think it puts Burt Jones at an advantage because obviously Chris Carr's a Republican. Um, Chris Carr. Is he? Yes. Uh, well. Not a conservative. I, I'm sorry. Hold on. Chris Carr identifies as a Republican. Oh, oh uh, there we go. So, but he does, you know, and obviously if you're, you know, appointing prosecutors, I would, I would be shocked if he appointed like Sherry Boston from DeKalb or something. I would be more inclined to to think he would appoint someone from a little bit redder area. Um, Not because that person will be, I mean, that prosecutor will still have to work under the direction of Willis and her office, but it it, it still will change the tone a little bit, you know? Give it to Rollins. Out here. Uh, I, don't, our, our, I mean, why would you wish that on him? Uh, Rollins is a hell of a prosecutor. Well, yeah, but like who wants to be in the middle of that shit show? Uh, Rollins is a, is a Marine. He'd be fine. Mm. It, it, but uh, then again, it, it doesn't have to be the DA doing it. it. It'd be somebody in his office, and his office is already swamped. So you're right. You're right. I, 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 I would not want cases being delayed in prosecution in Paulding mm. County to go and take care of some BS in Fulton. That's a very interesting principled point there, Dave. Way to go. <laughs> I, I have my moments. <laughs> the quote the, the, the quote that I like is the district attorney does not have to be apolitical, but her investigations do. And that's yeah. from the judge. Yeah. And I, I that is speak about principled. That is outstanding because, you know, you know, this judge was elected in a highly blue area and he stuck to uh, making sure law is one, apolitical, two, you know, justice. Just, you know, you can't you can't do both. And I, I think the judge did very well here. I agree. And, um, you know, what you just quoted was super direct. And I think that's important because of naysayers, but also, you know, he said an investigation of this significance when it has all the national attention on it that it does, his quote was, it cannot be burdened by legitimate doubts about the district attorney's motives, which speaks to like her motives might not have been about Burr Jones. It might have been strictly about Charlie Bailey and supporting him. That may be true, but to the public, the public is not going to understand that. And she has, you know, she again, not to belabor the point, but like she chose to take on this battle before she decided to support Charlie Bailey for lieutenant governor. And in taking on this battle, she had to she needs to set aside a lot of other stuff because everyone's watching or if they're well, not watching, they're at least, li- you know, they're at least they needs to have the no perception of impropriety even perceived. And, and my and my point my last point on it is say Burt Jones is guilty and he's found guilty you if you don't disqualify Fanny you open up appeals I mean you open up for for just to have the the you know the conviction thrown out because you there's no way that any uh, appeals court is going to hear that and not believe that the prosecutor was prejudiced and that, so it doesn't it, take Burt Jones out of it, take political out of it. If it if it was a guy who was convicted of of whatever carjacking, doesn't matter. If you can tie the prosecutor back to a personal 
vendetta against this person, you you give credence to the to having a retrial, to doing it again. So if when we're talking about criminal prosecution, the justice is blind and the prosecutor represents the state, not herself. And if that if if we go back and we look and say, well, she's not representing the state, she has an axe to grind here, that throws that conviction out. Mm-hmm. And it totally it t- destroys her credibility. It, even going forward, if if I were to run for DA of, of Fulton County, that's the first thing I would bring up is that her all of her convictions are suspect because she uses political point or uses her office for political gain. For her party, now I don't know if, if it would land in Ful- Fulton County, but that's exactly what I what I would say if I were trying to to take her job. I'm only you know six years of law school away from that. Yeah. All right, Jess, it's time for you to spike the football. An old nemesis finally faces his fate. Tattnall County Magistrate Judge was arrested by the GBI last week. Spike the football, Jess. Okay, so drum roll, please. Eric. Um, Eddie Anderson is the magistrate judge in Tattnall County. We've talked about Tattnall County a hundred times. I honestly don't remember if the initial story that we first talked about him years and years and years ago, if that was on the show. If it was, it was one of the very early ones. But um, Eddie Anderson, not an attorney, um, because you don't have to be in small counties, um, has a very poor understanding of the law in a lot of ways. Um, He had lots of complaints. He had civil suits filed against him over the years. Um, I was contacted by somebody way back when um, to, I guess, look into some of the things about his office. And I tried to get records and his his office told me I needed to show up in person. And I showed up in person and um, he talked to me for about a minute and a half and then pretty much demanded that I leave by yelling, good day, good day, good day, over and over and over. Um, and I ultimately got which, the records I was looking for. Which is a reference to, um, uh, not Charlie at the Chocolate Factory, but uh, uh, Willy Wonka. Yes. What? However, I don't think that's what he was referring it to. Because no, he's, he's not, not cool enough smart. for that. He, yeah. yeah, no. yeah he's, not cool, he's not cool enough but for that. that but that is the that is the meme and gif response anytime anyone mentions Eddie Anderson because... You know, he's, I mean, Eric, like, we'll play the recording. Hi. Yes. Um, it seems like yesterday we weren't really talking about something, so I brought, I brought it in writing what I'm looking for. And I spoke with a couple other courts um, in the area, so I know, like, I have a better understanding of what you guys keep and what you don't. I can tell you how many we found all the time. I can tell you, I didn't really look at nobody's dispossessory. Why? No, I spoke, I mean, that long you want to do that stuff. It's public that's record. Nothing, that's nothing for you. It's yes. public record. But it's nothing, well, what, you, what you need to do with it. It's public record. But it's not going to contain you. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. You don't need to know who's been read the list or not that. It's public record. I don't want to say that you need to know that. That's not what the open records are. How many I've found? I'll call you here. When you have a copy of the open records law? <coughs> Do I have a copy of no. There's no. We're not a court of records. There's no exemption. We're not a court of records. It doesn't records. matter. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. I'll well, give you a copy. How many we've done me. it? That's all we're going to get. That's all you're going to get now. You understand? No, that's not all yes, we're going to get. Yes, it is. Then I'll contact the attorney well, general's office. Who you need to and then you come up with something else. You are not. Are you, I don't think you understand that any government entity is subject you don't to. Okay. Somebody's real possession. That's because you, you won't look at it. It's that's public not record. That's not your business. It's public record. Uh, Why not? It's just not. It's nothing because you say so. It's nothing to do with you. It doesn't matter. There's nothing. Are you an attorney? It doesn't matter. Okay, then you don't have the law says it's, it's public record. record. That's not yeah, true. Right. That's not true. I can but go over to the. You get a copy of how many we've done. That's all you get. That's not true. Hey, you got a copy of that? That's, that's not true. Well, that's all you get. Well, that's not, you're not correct. Well, that's all you get. 
Well, just because you say so doesn't make it right. I just mouth because that's all you get. But there's a law in place. Well, you can show them the law and then you can come back. Pull it up, I can tell you exactly where good it is. Day. Good day. It says OCGS 50 dash 82. So you're going to deny this. That's right. But so, so I have always, I got the records I was looking for, but I have always had a um, disdain for Judge Anderson because he doesn't know what he's doing. He hasn't known what he's doing. And he's, for, for many years, he got away with just doing things as he wanted, um, threatening people or a, a lot of times allegedly threatening because, you know, there's things weren't always caught on camera, but lots of complaints of just being un, treated unfairly and, you know, signing warrants or um, eviction and dispossessory stuff without all the proper paperwork. And then, you know, magistrate courts aren't courts of record in the sense of when it's bound over to state court, there's records. They still keep papers, but like he took it as we don't have to keep a record of anything. So like you would go there and there would be no records literally in binders and stuff. So it was, he's just a mess. Well, about mm, a month ago, a little bit more than a month ago, maybe there was a Facebook post that went kind of viral in the Tattnall and Evans County community. And of course I saw it because people were like, Hey, Jessica, look at this. Um, where a homeowner had complained about or property owner and a neighbors had complained about Anderson, um, taking some of his peas without permission. And, um, his response his peas. was peas, like vegetables. Um, and the response was, I'm going to stomp your ass. Um, and it, they're just like the same arrogance that has always been exuded by Anderson. Um, you know, after the whole recording thing with me, a friendly name on the show who he's now deceased. So I'll just mention him and move on. But Joe McGovern, who was a judge, but the county attorney, Eddie Anderson had him send me a letter threatening to, that they were going to take out criminal charges against me because I posted the recording um, of Anderson yelling at me, get out of the office. And I was like, okay, buddy, that's not how this works. And so I had to slap them around a little bit. So they got like, they, just for, for many, many years, Eddie Anderson would get like small glimpses of accountability when he was sanctioned by the Supreme Court for his behavior of handling things with the public embarrassment of what he did with me and a couple other things that happened around, you know, over the years. But he was never truly held accountable. So with the peas thing, I really don't know how it got to the G. I think someone called the sheriff's office and the sheriff's office was like, look, to avoid any um, appearance of impropriety just because Tattano County Sheriff investigating Tattano County Judge doesn't really look the best. He contacted the GBI and the besides, GBI did- besides the fact that his department has to go to right depending totally. on what whatever judge is on, is on duty to sign warrants. Totally, um, and just you know, it is a small county, and there's always the excuse of or the reference to the good old boy system. And so, so anyway, the GBI started a probe and. I kept getting co- like emails and texts from people saying that he'd been arrested and the sheriff was covering it up. And I was like, I just really don't think that would happen with the sheriff that um, on this, especially. I, I just really don't think that Sheriff Sapp would cover it up and, and delete booking logs and stuff to protect him because eventually it's going to come out. Right. So but I they they kept telling me he's been arrested. He's been arrested. Well, finally, last week I got the glorious message i was leaving um i was leaving states like downtown statesboro for something and someone texted me with a screenshot of the jail log and they said that it said that eddie anderson had been charged by the g the dui the gui the gbi with terroristic threats and violation of oath by a public officer and obviously um he was released on his own recognizance which um, a lot of people were upset about that. And the only reason that I try to like, call, yes, is he being treated? Then some other people would be treated to some degree. Um, he's not going anywhere like he his entire like his entire life is rooted here. But also it would be more trouble than it's worth for taxpayers and law enforcement to house him in a jail where he has had those people appear before him. Like, well, well, he's magistrate and not uh, superior court. Yeah, but so, he signs all the warrants and does all the first he, appearances he, on bond. 
Yeah, he does bond appearances. He signs warrants. Denies but bond. He, but he, he, you know, he's not convicting anybody. No, but if a judge so, said you couldn't go home and then you had to share a judge or a cell with well, the yeah, judge, sh- that's sure. not. So, well, I yeah, mean, it'd be a very romantic encounter. It, it just uh, would have, it would have cost, the, it would have been a more of a problem than it was worth. So they released him. Um, I so drove straight what? to Tattano County. It was like four, I was like four o'clock when I got there and I went to the clerk's office to get the paperwork myself. Um, and he was packing up his office. So what's his possible sentence? So the terroristic threats and acts is a misdemeanor. So it carries up to 12 months, up to a $1,000 fine. Um, but because he did it in the official capacity of um, being a judge and like... Violation of oath and, of office. Yep. So they asserted, you know, or he assert. I mean, he was saying, I'm going to stomp your ass is not the only thing he said. Um, and he, but he entered, he injected his political office into it so they charged him and that carries it's supposed to carry a mandatory one year one to five year one cent when a minimum of one year but it has one to five years um if convicted they're not going to sentence him to prison i'm sure he's 70 um and and now there's like these rumors of it being dementia and stuff, which, you know, if that was the case, you know, sh- if his family's known he's had dementia, his family and friends, then shame on them for allowing him to continue to sit on the bench because. Wait, what the hell are you talking about? We have somebody in the White House with dementia. Well, I'm just saying, like, if, you know, <laughs> you want to, like, claim all of a sudden he's not responsible for his actions, but you've allowed him to, you know, even even if it was for just a, for two months. I mean, that's two months too long. But um it really it for me so he resigned because you know the JQC pretty much tells you you've got this amount of time to do it otherwise we're going to remove you yeah um, the governor will, could could remove him yeah and and then they'll so you know to me do i think that this system is i don't think it's going to go away i don't think they're just going to null process it but i don't think that he's going to have the book thrown at him in any sense but it's important for a lot of reasons because while it, everyone's like, it's just peas, like I would have just handled it and said, get off my property or blah, blah, blah. The, the, the problem is that, and it doesn't, this isn't, he actually did this. He admitted to it. Like in the warrants, the GBI agent attested that they were taking it out based on the investigation and Judge Anderson's own admissions. So he has admitted to it. So we know that that part is true, but he'll, pl- he'll plead out. Well, but my point is that this is a, such a minor thing, but it it represents in an like a, a at least five year history, if definitely probably more, but at least five year history of doing things beyond what he was permitted to do because he believed nobody would ever hold him accountable. And people like that, you know, a lot of times it is the small thing. It's like the the mobsters getting caught on tax evasion at the very end after well it, it, but the people of Tatnall uh, continued to elect him they did not they did um and i don't understand that they had a there was a, a contested race back in 16 i think well 16 is outside of the five year maybe 18 i'm not sure i can't recall but there was a three-way race there were two other opponents i think if there hadn't been a third person the one of them I think one of them would have beat him, but you're right. They did continue. And, but the problem is this, is that when you're talking about a judge that just goes well beyond people who are voters and people who live in Tattano County. And so, you know, yes, they got the government they deserve, but we all had to pay the price. So go ahead. Hit your last point. See you later, loser. (laughs) So uh, another previously mentioned story (laughs) Daniel Defense CEO testifies before Congress. Daniel Defense is a weapons manufacturer. They are based in Georgia. Wait. They're off of I-16, right? Wait. My final point should be, good day. <laughs> yes, it should. That's not what you wrote. Okay, but go on. So you go ahead. Daniel Defense, King Congress, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're off of 16, right? They're on their way to Savannah? Yes, in Bryan County. Yep. A uh, big, beautiful... Uh, facility they, they make ar-15s they're the uh, ones we talked about in the pr- in the past it was in one of my closing thoughts but they started in a garage true american built like small business turned into a giant facility correct 
uh, uh, employing hundreds of people. Uh, huge facility, beautiful facility. I, I've never toured it. I, I've driven by it. And, you know, I I didn't know that they were based in Georgia till I was going down to Savannah for, for a week. And I'm like, oh, that's Daniel Defense. Man, that's a huge facility. Um, so the article we're quoting here is very left-leaning because well, it says Georgia SEC gun manufacturer defends assault weapons in a congressional hearing. Yeah, the Capital Beat News Service, which I think is like connected to Associated Press. So no surprise there. Yeah, it's uh, first of all, there's no such thing as an assault weapon. There are assault rifles, and those are select fire, which means you can do semi or fully automatic. Daniel Defense does not manufacture fully automatic weapons. Anyway. Correct. Uh, the House is trying to push through uh, some bill to a, a, another quote-unquote assault weapons ban. The last one went so well. Uh, if, for, for those who don't know, because I'm old... Uh, I remember the the original uh, uh, assault weapons ban back in the 90s. It did not ban semi-automatic rifles, but it did. It, it banned things like bayonet lugs because of all those drive-by bayonettings. Uh, it, it it barred collapsible stocks and things like it, it was it was stupid. And this this proposed legislation is just as stupid. But they went ahead and, and talked to the, to the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. Well, they were initially and, like borderline demanded to. Yeah, I mean, I mean because because the, the the House Committee has been cruel about them. Like there have been calls for them to stop producing part. I mean, while I don't think he ever had a he never should have had a duty to testify. Like I respect that he does because he owes them nothing. But he's trying to educate. Yeah, I would love to go before Congress. I would love it. Yeah. Because I would absolutely get a contempt of Congress uh, charge levied against me. Because I have nothing of nothing but contempt for Congress. Huh. Uh, the, I mean, there are several good quotes. One is, uh, these acts are committed by murderers. Murderers are not responsible. You're not responsible. They're not responsible. You say, you say not responsible people. Not that they're not responsible for their murders. Right, right, right. Uh, first of all, AR-15s have been around since the fifties. It, uh, it was invented by a guy named Eli Stoner. Uh, the the original AR-15 uh, that eventually got sold to the to the military as a select fire weapon, as the M16. Uh, Eli Stoner w- was an absolute genius, uh, second only to uh, 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 to the inventor of the uh, of uh, the nineteen eleven to to uh, he, the the BAR the nineteen nineteen. Uh, so he he was an absolute genius when when he came up with this weapon. Uh, but in function, the AR-15 functions no different from a hunting rifle. And that's what these people can't get through their thick damn skulls is the, the idea that because it's black, which makes it racist, because it has plastic parts on it, because this magazine is external, that somehow this, this weapon is, is evil. I can tell you, I own several uh, variations of the AR-15, and they have never busted out of my safe and gone and killed anybody. They have not assaulted anyone. Yeah, amazing. The good news is this uh, this law will pr- or, or this legislation will probably pass out of the House. Uh, they have the numbers to make it happen, and and Nancy Pelosi will push it through. It has very little chance of getting through the Senate. Yeah. You know, first, first of all, you have 50 Democratic senators and you have to, assuming that all 50 would vote for this, and they're not. You've got Cinema and you've got Manchin that are both in fairly conservative states. 
that probably won't vote for it. And then you have to get 10 because, it's you know, it, you have to get past the filibuster. You would have to get 10 Republicans. And off the top of my head, you're going to get Romney. OK, even if you get all 50, that's 51. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to get 49 Republicans in Republican states to to vote for this piece of crap? No, mm. no, you get no, some, no. But not all of them. Yeah, you're not going to get ten. So it, I, the I don't I, I do not think that this is going to pass. This is this is grandstanding. This is we're coming up to an election election cycle. Elections in November. This is so that all the Democrats can go back and say, I'm trying to protect you from these evil guns. But they won't let me keep elect me so that we can continue the fight. And Jody Heiss agrees with me. He says that. Oh, good. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, no, exactly who I was looking to agree with me. Right. Hmm. Uh, so uh, Democrats are going after gun, gun manufacturers for political purposes while not dealing with the real reasons and the rise in violent crime. Uh, I mean, for once, I can That's say Jody fair, Heiss is yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, it. A stopped clock, clock. Is, is right twice today. <laughs> we spent too much time around each other. <laughs> oh, too much time criticizing people, too. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true, though. I mean, he's not wrong. Like, we're not. Let's talk about, first of all, in, I mean, yes, these weapons are sometimes used. However, there's a rise in violent crime almost everywhere. Um, well, there's there's there are complicating factors to it. One is the the defund the police movement, and these cities that that are taking money away from police departments are seeing a rise in violent crimes. And they're also seeing a rise in in theft because they know that they're not, they're not going to go to jail. Uh, another is the fact that we have police chasing after people for pot instead of addressing violent crime. And third, which I really think is the biggest, and, you know, I, I have a, a guest lined up that uh, in the next few weeks, I think we're going to get on to talk about mental illness. You know, we don't have the ability anymore just to lock people up that are, you know, for lack of better words, effing nuts. Mm-hmm. But we risk, we scare people who aren't nuts but need help into not getting help. Right. Not getting help because, they're uh, again, red flag laws. They're afraid to go and get the help they need. And this is really prevalent in, in the veteran community. Uh, guys who need help with their PTSD, who who are having thoughts of suicide, or but they're, they're afraid to go and get help because they're afraid that they're going to get red flagged. And mental health is one of those things that doesn't just get better by itself. You know, depression is not having a bad day. Depression is having a good day and feeling bad about it. Mm-hmm. And constantly feeling bad. So, you know, th- th- there are a lot of people who don't seek help because they're afraid of what, of uh, of telling the therapist. It's even a joke I put out on Facebook which is, you know, uh, trying to tell your therapist enough to get well, but not so much that you get locked up. Yeah. It's, it's, the, the, the worst part about it is that, you know, I'm sure that the, the comment, the response from some Republicans and conservatives in response to Daniel Defense testimony is, is good. And I'm, his, his testimony is good. The problem is that once again, we live in a country where, you're either for something or against it. You don't listen, and that's the end of it. You know, you're exactly right. Is n- nuanced points are lost in the 24-hour news cycle. Uh, we we find that with every politically charged debate, whether it's abortion, guns, or anything else, is you can't have a nuanced point. Uh, you you can't have a nuanced point that look you know we, we need to look at this particular sector yes we, no one wants a madman with a gun 
So why don't we address the madman instead of the gun? Right. And the AR-15 is such an easy target because it looks scary to, to, to certain people. It just, it, you know, it, it's intimidating. It, you know, it's a rifle. It, it shoots a, a 22 caliber bullet at high velocity. It is, it is absolutely lethal at high velocity, but it's a 22 caliber bullet. It, all things being equal and at the normal range to shoot somebody at, at, at let's say 10, 10 meters, I'm, you know, I'm much more deadly with my nine mil or my 45 than I am with an AR-15. Sure. A lot of people but the, are. Yeah. The AR-15 looks scary. But, you know, the, the you know, the pistol. Oh, well, you know, it, 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 just just watch movies and, and, and see how you, know, you see someone get shot with with a rifle and they go or with a shotgun. And they go blowing back five feet and, and stuff like that. And that that's not the way it works. But this is a good time to remind you that these are our opinions and not those of anyone not on the show or any respective company for which we may work own, or otherwise associate ourselves with on a regular or irregular basis. Also, you can find other episodes and relevant stories over at thegeorgiavirtue.com. All right, policing for profit. How one Alabama town of 1,500 used the system of fines, fees, and forfeitures to bankroll the city and police operations to, and garner attention of the federal government. Jessica. This is one heck of a story. Um, I mean, we all, I've reported on plenty of small town police departments that police for profit. And, you know, in some areas, it's something that is always a thing. But this is this is next level. So this is a small town of about 1500 people outside of Birmingham, I think, Brookside, Alabama. Um, And basically what they were doing and we'll go into the details but the the summary is that they had uh traffic citations they were kind of they call the article called them shady i think the legal suggestion would be like questionable um but what they were doing was they jacked up the fines and then when people couldn't pay the fines they took their stuff and yeah, their, it, their it revenue look, it, went up 600 percent over a two-year period and, and we see this, even uh, the city of Sandy Springs, which, and in, in, in this, happened, this happened all over Metro Atlanta, uh, at least Sandy Springs has an exit on, on 285, uh, where cities that don't even have an exit would patrol 285 uh, to, to, get, to get fines to fund their city. This is next level. This is, you know... Take everything they can. Uh, it, it's it's pillaging. They're absolutely pillaging. Well, the thing is, is per usual, it's regressive. I mean, it, it's wrong no matter who it happens to, particularly if the crimes are or the alleged crimes are questionable or didn't occur at all. But. It hurts the poor the most because, of course, they can't pay fines when you charge them with something they didn't do. And then you charge them a fine that is exorbitant for the sole purpose of funding your police department. Yeah. If, if you're caught doing five miles over the speed limit and they hit you with a fifteen hundred dollar fine and your rent is you, know, you have to decide whether to pay the fine or pay your rent. That's tough. That's very tough. Um, I apologize. And, and, I had to kill a bug. <laughs> I, I was it a roach did you have to rip down no, the shower curtain no it was just a little <laughs> spider which is why i was able to just grab a shoe and smack it a couple times and not interrupt the show with screaming and hollering so <laughs> for those who haven't listened for you know years jessica's story of of having a palmetto bug in her house ripping down the shower curtain and using the shower curtain rod as if she were a gladiator to to kill a, a palmetto bug was epic. Ha. Ha. <laughs> yes, your trauma amuses me. <laughs> but back on this place, on, on, on Alabama. 
It takes a lot for the feds to get involved. Like it they, takes a lot to get their attention. They, I mean, yeah, for sure. Now, I don't know if they, if they find the wrong person. And they might have. They well, might have, they somebody might have tried, contacted... Tried to do this. Yes, somebody. Well, yes, you're right. But what happened? What happened is the Institute for Justice filed the class action lawsuit and they had sworn testimony and evidence to back it up and saying that, you know, these things are being fabricated. They're forced to pay thousand dollars in fines and they're seizing vehicles. Um, They had an in with towing companies and just all kinds of stuff. Um, I think there were four people who filed it initially um, and. Like she was charged with following too close. Like one girl was charged with following too closely and possession of marijuana, but they never had any marijuana. They never found it. They had. They never even like reported finding it. They had her car towed, and she had to pay a thousand dollars to get it back. Then she had to pay her fine. Like just all these things. Um, and so they they filed a suit in northern Alabama, and when the lawsuit, the lawsuit's not done. It's still pending, but um when they got it past a certain point where they're not going to just have it like tossed and dismissed because of it being frivolous, that's when they were able to get the DOJ's attention. Yeah. It makes me want to go to that town and speed through that town, you know, you know, do 80 in a, in a 65 and, and go ahead and put $5,000 in cash in my pocket and see what happens. Well, and you know, you said it's, it's big for the justice department to get involved. That's, totally true but like it's even bigger deal that they sent a letter with an inquiry and and then filed a statement of interest in federal court saying police should be driven by justice not revenue and we have due process clause in the 14th amendment for a reason and you're supposed to be neutral for a reason and judges should not profit and police should not profit and you know like they outlined this 16 page document and how the u.s government has an interest um in all of this, citing all of these case laws of how they have, you know, cities have lost similar suits in the past. Um, and I mean, that's to me, that's a big deal. Yeah. And speaking of shakedowns, we have federal prosecutors want to keep key details about the planning and execution of a raid of private safe deposit box individuals suspected of committing crimes. Not suspected of committing crimes. Not sorry. So yeah, not 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 not's an important word, isn't it? It really is. It really it really makes the story. <laughs> uh, um, in so in March of 2021, there was a company. Well, a little bit before March of 2021, there was a company that was in the crosshairs of the FBI. They were investigating them. They had suspected it was U.S. private vaults, which um, hosted safe deposit boxes. Not at to my understanding, it was not at a bank. These um, things were, it was in Beverly Hills. Um, They have companies in other location or location, other, excuse me, the company had other locations and whatnot, but um, safe deposit boxes, storage business for all intents and purposes. So the FBI has them in their crosshairs. I'm not really sure why. Um, It's kind of irrelevant because the, the warrant um, that gave them the authority to go in and to these businesses locations was um, for the business itself. And it explicitly forbade the FBI from seizing the safe deposit boxes or their contents. Um, And the FBI was like, F you um, safe deposit boxes and the assets in them are going to be our business. We're going to catalog the items. And so they opened the boxes of hundreds of people, seized the boxes and um, the things within them. And I don't know the status of those things because this is all, um, I guess, transpired rather quickly since it became public. Yes. Yeah. And it's still pending. But um, throughout this process, there were, depositions that were made um, by some of the FBI agents and and federal they've been filed in court and federal prosecutors have filed paperwork to have and like for injunctions to keep them under seal. And so far, the court has granted that. And the prosecutors are like, well, it's the customary practice, um, only pages and depositions that would be like couldn't like directly relevant to this are necessary and part of a legal record, um, which is 
is true that's customary. Like I've even seen that in cases I cover on the state level, right? Like there might be a, a transcript from something previously and a bunch of it is redacted when you go to trial because you don't need to be influenced by the other mess. The The thing here, though, is the public is like, well, you're not talking about just a criminal case. You're talking about wronged parties who were wronged by the government and the government is helping the government keep it under seal. Um, and they want to know based like they want the deposition so that they can understand why the FBI one went against the warrant and two believe they had the right to go against what was outlined in the warrant um, because they violated the privacy of every single person who had a box. Well, it's, it's important. Well, it's important to understand why you get a safe deposit box. It's obviously not safe. If the FBI can just walk in and go, we're opening all of these. Mm -hmm. uh, people keep any, anything from their will in there to documents that, you know, they may be keeping on, the, you know, uh, on employers or anything else that the, that they want to survive them should they die, whatever it is. Yeah, so people keep cash in there, even though you're not supposed to. But they do keep uh, sometimes expensive items. Yes. Jewelry, whatever. Life insurance policies. Yes. A anything you want to be protected against a fire. You know, I I've got a, a, a pretty or good a safe in my house. But a bank vault is more protected against fire than, than my safe is. My safe is good for, I don't know, five or six hours uh, of, of, of a fire. I agree with you about the, the theft or the, the fire, but it's also theft. And the government stole their They did. They absolutely did. And the government had, it was outside the, the, the warrant. The, the FBI had no authority to do that. Yeah, this wasn't and like honestly, the fine line of like, maybe we should, maybe we can, maybe we can't. It said, it explicitly excluded the boxes. And I blame this company for not telling him no. Well, what are they supposed to do? How tell can them you to F off. How can you protect a hundred boxes? I mean, there were more than a hundred, but let's say there's two employees working there and the FBI comes in. And if you've ever seen an FBI raid, there's at least 10 of them. And how are you supposed to do anything? You call your the first thing you do when the FBI shows up is call your attorney and get them a copy of the warrant. And when they say, "Hey, we need to get the key, we need to get into these boxes," is tell them no. I agree with you, but it but the thing is, is that attorneys interjected in, and interceded in all of this fairly early on, and it hasn't it hasn't slowed or stopped the process until there was some media attention brought to it, which, you know, everyone hates the media, but this is like these t cases like this and stories like this are one of the most important purposes of the media. And so now that this is happening, um, they are trying to seal it, which would n n make sure that it is never unsealed. And here's the thing. It further erodes the trace, the trust in banks. And I understand this is not a bank per se. Yeah, but the concept. But yeah, the the most people get safe deposit boxes are are in banks, and it further erodes the trust in banks. If I can't if I can't put something in a safe deposit box that that is not available uh, for people just to go bust open and, and rifle through, why in the hell would I put it there and not keep it in my personal safe? Well, and that's a very good point. But you know it. <sighs> I didn't fall. I haven't been following this case all along. But when I saw this story, it caused me to go back and um, read some of the older articles and stuff. But this time last year, um, like to the date, um, the a judge admonished the FBI because in defense of them trying of the public and the people wronged by the um, inappropriate seizure. In attempt of trying to get the documents, the FBI was like trying to expose the names of the people. Like they made an attempt to expose the identity of some of the people who had boxes and what was in it. Um, and 
uh, supposedly, well, first of all, which is disgusting. Like you're like, oh, we're under the 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 microscope, so we're actually going to detract from that because I my I would guess that it had some like there was stuff in there that maybe shouldn't have been in there or that was questionable or whatever the case may be, but they wanted to take the heat off them and deflect. The I didn't realize this because it's not in the story that we're referencing, but um, I remember now that there's it was they they took eighty six million dollars in cash, jewelry, and other valuables um, from the collective boxes. Eighty six million dollars. And here's the thing: if if they opened up one of the boxes and found I don't know the hand of a murdered person. They, they can't act on it yeah. because it's an illegal search and seizure. They violated the Fifth Amendment or the Fourth Amendment. And even if they found the hand of a, of a murder victim sitting in a safe deposit box, they couldn't act on it. Dip. Yeah, I mean, it just. It's bad. It, it, yeah. I, I, I don't know what the Justice Department's doing, but hey, Jessica, real quick, DeSantis files a complaint against Miami restaurant after kids attend drag show citing a 1947 ruling on men impersonating women. Jesus. Yeah, this is a big mess of stuff. So a restaurant. So there's a state law. Well, no, there is a. I don't know if it's a law because it's one of those things that is enforced based on a supreme or a state supreme court ruling. So it must it must be a law because he wouldn't be able to file a complaint. I don't know. But DeSantis relying on a 1947 state supreme court ruling about men impersonating women being a quote suggestive and indecent fashion um means they're constituting a public nuisance. He filed a complaint against the restaurant because they had a drag brunch with children in attendance and as a result of this complaint filed by the governor of florida um the liquor license of this company can be revoked and of course the left is like this is just desantis hating everyone because you know they had the don't say gay bill they had they did critical race theory like we did um it's quite an interesting thing. I don't I don't think we've ever I shouldn't say that cuz I don't know everything. You don't often hear about a governor filing a complaint against a a, a local restaurant like that. DeSantis was my front runner in uh in my little personal pool for for 2024. This is not help him at all. One, this was not it, it, this is not a drag show at a public school, which you know absolutely shouldn't be done. Uh, it wasn't a drag show in a public library. If this was a drag show at a private entity having brunch, and the parents were well aware of whether or not they were going to bring their children to this to this brunch. What the hell is he doing? I don't know. I mean, the, you know, the whole parental bill of rights thing and just those legislation like passing about how parents, parents, parents. And then you're like, the parents yeah, took I, their kids somewhere. So we're going to interject. I mean, like if anything, first of all, this that ruling is antiquated. And while it's not off the books and whatever, if it is a law. It's not off the books, but it's it would be struck down today in a heartbeat. So that's the first thing to consider, which tells you that what he's doing is a media spectacle because it's absolutely a First Amendment thing. I don't care if you don't agree with like transgender lifestyle, cross dressing lifestyle or drag. The reality is that. It is a First Amendment issue and the courts would respect it as such if it were ever challenged beyond. I don't know if I mean, the state Supreme Court might overturn it. The U.S. Supreme Court absolutely would. Yeah, look, I'm not above going to to a drag show. You know, I'm I'm an adult. If uh, uh, if it's if it's a good show, I mean, if it's the you know, the birdcage or whatever, they're putting on a good show, whatever. You know, if, if it's entertaining, I'm not above going to a drag show. 
Uh, I probably, if I were a parent, wouldn't take a kid to it, but that would be my decision as a parent. Right. Uh, DeSantis, I think, really jumped the shark on this one. I think it's going to hurt him in his uh, in in his presidential bid. I mean, this the, the, this one's bad. This was a horrible decision. It was, and you just can't. You know, if anything, the parents are. I mean, yes, this this is what the ruling says. But if anything, it comes down to if you want to hold someone accountable, and I don't support this, but you should hold the dang parents accountable. Right. You're exactly right. And the thing is, it should never, ever, ever get to the to the governor's desk. I, 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 again, I don't know what DeSantis was thinking. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know DeSantis, obviously. Uh, uh, I know our governor. I, I, I don't know Florida's governor. Um, so I don't know what his thought process was on this, but he really screwed the pooch. He, he he really 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 did on this one. It, this is it can do nothing but hurt because there really are it, when you get into to crap like this, you have to understand that, that there are a lot of gay Republicans. But w- when you when you do stupid stuff like this, you alienate them. And this is nothing but cannon, you know, uh, uh, you know, ammunition, cannon, cannon ammunition for whomever's going to run against them. Uh, it's not going to be Biden because I don't think Biden's going to survive four years. But whoever's run, running against him is going to throw this out and charge up the, the, the gay community saying, you know, he doesn't even. And look, not even <laughs> even drag queens aren't necessarily gay. Uh, True. And they're not necessarily people who are like desiring to be transgender or feeling or going through the pro like it doesn't even have that kind of thing. So if that is your basis, like some people just do it for fun. Yeah, and look, I, I've been in a drag show. It was to raise money what? for cancer. Yes, I have. Oh, it was to raise money for cancer. <laughs> You're shocked. No, 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 no. I support whatever you choose to do. <laughs> no, it was it was to raise money for cancer. And uh, uh, it, the funny part was, is a bunch of really, you know, menly men, you know, putting on dresses and dancing and, and all that stuff to raise money, may raise money for cancer. It, it, uh, according to this definition from 1947, I guess I'm a criminal. But it wasn't in Florida. No, no, so. no. You're just a public nuisance. I, I, I am anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jess. Uh, let's get to your closing thought. Oh, it's just a little thing. I never watched Tiger King during the Netflix pandemic showdown where everyone was talking about it. I never watched it. But it has influenced policy in, the D- in D.C., um, a bill to restrict the private ownership of big cats like lions, tigers, and leopards as for pets or breeding. Um, it passed the House last week, and um, they called it a victory for animal welfare activists and Carol Baskin. <laughs> um, Sixty-three Republicans voted in favor of it. There were it was it passed two seventy-eight to one thirty-four, though all the votes against were Republican. I. I'm assuming, well, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why. I, it's not the role of the federal government. Um, but I think it's funny that it's like driven by a Netflix documentary about a white trash family. Okay. First of all, documentary is very loose. I watched every, <laughs> every episode of that documentary is a very, very loose term for the, for that show. Um, uh, all that, all that uh, quote unquote documentary taught me was given enough methamphetamine, you could become gay. Well, so and then like the, the bill gives it only 
the only people allowed to have it would be sanctuaries, universities, and and zoos. Um, and while some of those are not, pub- some of them are private. The problem is like, I don't support a bill where you only allow the government to do something. That's never worked out well for us. Um, and then you have to like, if you already have a cat, you can't get any more cats. You can't. You can keep them if you don't breed them. And then you have to register them, which that's not. So the poor cats can't get laid. Yeah. And I mean, I I don't know. (laughs) Thanks. Well, (laughs) that be Carol Baskin. Um, Happy birthday. Uh, Sunday was uh, Jessica's birthday. She turned 48. Shut up. I did not. <laughs> but happy birthday. Uh, thank you very much for, for bringing me on this uh, ride that we've been on. It's, it, it's, it's been outstanding. Is uh, it over? No, I hope uh, not. Well, it just sounds like you're like... I hope not. It's been a wild ride. I hope not, but... But uh, you were the person, you were the deciding person that that brought me on the show. And I I have enjoyed it over the last few years. And happy birthday. Thanks. So, for the birthday girl, 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 (laughs) birthday girl, Jessica Salagi, for our editor, Eric Cumbie, I'm Dave Roberts. Have a great week. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday.